Good morning, guys. Today we're going to take you to one of the most beautiful cities in the world, Florence. Florence is visited every year by more than 15 million people. And for good reasons. It is a town filled with art, history and is even the birthplace of gelato. And today we're going to show you what you can do in this city if you only have a day to spend here. Let's get into it. For free. For free. Trust me, I'm Australian. If you get to Florence by train, just follow the crowd towards the city centre. The first attraction you will bump into is the San Lorenzo Market. Here you will be able to find all sorts of artifacts, in particular Florence is very famous for leather. So you will be able to buy leather jackets, bags and all sorts of leather stuff. If you keep following the San Lorenzo markets, you'll eventually get to the Basilica de San Lorenzo, which is one of the biggest churches in Florence. Uh, it's also one of the oldest churches in Florence, if not the oldest, which was built in 393 AD. In the 15th century, the Basilica got completely renovated by the masters from the Renaissance period, including Donatello, Michelangelo and Brunelleschi. Alright, where do we go now? We're going this way to see one of the major sites, but I won't tell you what it is yet. If you keep walking towards the city centre, you will find the most beautiful church in Florence. It is not just a church, but it's a beautiful, huge piece of art. It's called the Cathedrale of Santa Maria del Fiore, and it took 140 years to be built. The dome is over 10 stories high, and to this day is the largest brick dome in the entire world. So fun fact about this place, it's five minutes from the train station. Uh, it's one of the most visited places in Europe, and this is the fourth largest church in, uh, in Europe, and it's amazing. There's a line to get in, and it's not even 10 o'clock, that means that it's actually still closed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, make sure you have a lot of time if you want to enter. Never ends. We almost made it half away. We are in, that was half an hour queue, so it wasn't too bad. So we just went into the cathedral itself, uh, quite empty inside, quite surprising, uh, it's much prettier on the outside. The most interesting part of it is the inside of the dome itself, which is worked on by an artist called Bru something? Brunelleschi. Brunelleschi. Uh, he painted that for 18 years apparently, so it's up to you guys if you want to visit it or not, uh, if you want to spend half an hour waiting in line to see what we saw. Uh, I thought it was interesting, wouldn't do it again. As you walk towards the Ponte Vecchio, you have to cross the Piazza della Signoria. Apparently this is the, this is the museum of the Palazzo Vecchio. Which it means? Share it, share it, share it. I don't know. Old palace. The old palace. Old palace. The old building. This, the old palace. Is, this is the museum of the old building. Mm -hmm. The old palace building. And there behind me you can see the David of Michelangelo. That is just a copy though. The real one is inside the museum. Now we are walking towards the Ponte Vecchio, which is actually Italian for Old Bridge. This was the only bridge in Florence that wasn't destroyed during the Second World War. The Ponte Vecchio was built in 1345 and the bridge itself spans across the river Arno. 
What makes this bridge interesting as is that it was built with three arches, which is quite an innovative design for the time. The bridge is also world famous for its amazing jewellery shops. He's so busy here. So we're standing in front of this statue of a, of a bull uh, in bronze or brass. Apparently it's either good luck or it's tradition to give the snout a rub, put a coin in his mouth, watch the coin roll down into the pond below. So that's what we're going to do. I found 10 Australian cents to put in the pig mouth. Now there are Australian dollars in there as well. The most expensive pizza I have ever had in my life. Five dollars of slice. Since five euros slice, yeah. Alright, we just had the world's most expensive pizza. Now we are going to see what we can see for the next couple of hours before getting the train back to Faenza. Before crossing the river Arno, you will find the Basilica of Santa Croce. It's only a minor basilica of the Roman church, but it is the final resting place of very famous Italians like Michelangelo, uh, wait for it, Michelangelo, Galileo, Machiavelli, and the, compo the composer Rossini. And then we have the statue of Dante Alighieri, who is the author of the Divine Comedy. He's considered the father of the Italian language. We decided not to pay 8 euro to go inside the church, so we crossed the river and now we are uh, um, going to see the Rose Garden. So there are two gardens that you can visit close to the Florence city center. One is Giardino delle Rose and one is Giardino Bardini. The second one is the one that you have to pay for. This is Giardini delle Rose and it's free. So if you want to see Florence from above and have an awesome view, you should definitely come here. It's a small walk uphill, but it's worth it. And this is the reward when you get to the top. It's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, Italy is the only country in which you have to pay one euro to go to toilet. So a little tip to visit Florence for free, don't drink. Because if you drink, you will need to go to toilet. And to go to toilet, you will have to pay. Enjoyed our time at the Rose Gardens here. Uh, now it's ice cream time. Yeah, I got the same. Do you want to say how much we paid for this two ice cream? Nope. No. <laughs> Alright guys, that was our visit to Florence. We walked for 8 hours and we did 20,000 steps. Florence is very small and it's very easy to visit in one day, but if you want to visit the museum, consider at least two or three days here. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, a thumbs up, a subscribe, share it amongst your pals and your peers, and we will see you in the next one.